The fighting of game roosters is an ancient sport. Historians tell us that it's the oldest sport, excluding the hunt. The rooster has been used as a symbol in nearly every religion of the world. He arrived on the first ships to America. He fought in the pits of Virginia in the same hands which signed the American Constitution. Today, he is outlawed in nearly every state. He is a $20 million a year American business. His business is courage. He represents a heritage thousands of years old. Nine seven three, Judy Delta. Your landing gear is not down. Just having a look, Pittsburgh. these beauties. Uh, they won't see blood like this around here. <laughs> Every Kansas Jayhawker worth his boots will know it by morning. This is our ace, Clure. Yeah, we're gonna put our money on him, too. Mike, get some sleep, will you? Gas her up. We'll try to get out of here in the morning. Where are you going with those, Curly? In the Cadillac. Okay. Make sure you strap them down good, too. Okay. Howdy. I'd like to have a single engine for five hours. Can you have your gas and ready, and I'll be back in an hour. Yes, sir, that'll cost you about $35 an hour. Y'all going out to Kinks and get us a cock house. Feed and empty him. Don't leave him for a second. Looks like I'll be late. Damn your soul. Lift that blazing broom. You're going to get dust all over the tater salad. Betcha, Mr. Kink. Anything you say. We got three, maybe 400 cockers due before sundown. 
Will you straighten things out, you hear? Damn your hide. Here's your chance to all join in. Join old Jelly Cat and dance around with him. Oh, Monty Reba. Turn that radio on. George Tom Alley Cat came to the ball. He was plenty handsome. Yes, Daddy, what do you want? We got a cockfight tonight, and I haven't heard from the sheriff or anybody. Now, honey, get out of the tub and call that bagman Cedric and tell him to get over here. Yes, Daddy. And Reva. Yes, Daddy. Tell him I want to see the senator. Okay, Daddy. Damn it, he owes me a call. Okay. <laughs> you leave Wyatt alone. Give him a chance. He doesn't care anything about your roosters. He's just your pawn and you know it. Why don't I get out of here and take him? If you was going to, you would have. One no, Jeffrey, this you... year or next. We've been through this a thousand times. You just don't hear it. It's not about us, it's about him. Look at me, Gailey. Look up here in my eyes and just once see me. I'm a breeder, Gailey, I'm a cocker. You're a damn fool, Stokehilder, that's what you are, always have been. Been 18 years playing Cinderella, girl. Missing all the facts. I have to teach what I know. There are facts for him like there are facts for you. You're just an egg layer, Gailey. You're my hen. <laughs> You shouldn't ask me to sweep in my condition. What condition is that, chicken? Lazy assed. Asthma. Thank you, Reva. Mm -hmm. He says somebody's bringing the beans in the slaw. He says there's going to be four or five hundred people coming. From Indiana, from Iowa, from Illinois. He says even Detroit. He says this is going to be the biggest five-bird derby this year. Even Texas, Reva. You probably won't have enough ham, Reva. Did he say that, too? I said that. You know he doesn't care much for ham himself. Clean up this damn place, chicken. I had enough of you trying to see up my myself. Oh, I do love you, little girl. Did I ever tell you the time I climbed a girl basketball player at the state playoffs in Des Moines? <laughs> liar, liar, liar. Ho, ho, rodeo. Ho, ho, rodeo. Whip, 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 Billy Boy, we're gonna whip their butts and kick so far tonight. <laughs> it's my 18th birthday. It's my 18th birthday. Yeah, <laughs> Don't you worry, man. Don't you worry, Billy, not for one minute. When Stoke gave me these last night of supper, right in front of her, I knew I was going to Kinks. I knew for sure. She didn't say nothing, not one damn word. Just look at them, Billy. And they're mine, how about that? You know, I know a lot more than you think. A lot more than he thinks, that's for sure. You know the one thing that surprises me the most? Is I ain't scared. 
Not one little bit. Don't matter that you can't talk, Billy. You're a heck of a lot smarter than anybody I've ever seen with a chicken. I know when I come into the ring tonight at Kinks, they're gonna name me. They're gonna call me Yodi's boy. But when I go, I hope to think of you, Billy. I hope to do. That'll mean I'm damn good. <sighs> It's a cracker. Yes, sir. Tell Mr. King that the senator and Sheriff Round are here to visit. Tell him to get his ass down here pronto. I will, sirs. Yes, sirs. Yes, sirs. I will. Yes, sirs. I will, sir. Yes, sirs. I will. I will. Mr. King! Mr. King! It's that sheriff and that Santa man! Mr. King! Father wants his back, Mr. King! They're all duded up, too. Oh, calm down, chicken, for crying out loud. You'd think the barn was on fire. Well, I'll go back to them. Wait a minute! You go back and tell them. Mr. King Scott, the gal, I'll be slow getting down. Thank you, Cedric. I'm William Callan. I'm not sure we've met. I'm Leroy Pitt. My father helped catch John Dillinger. What's this crap about the gout? Oh, he gets it real bad, sir. Been in bed all week. Sick. This place gives me the creeps. This is an ancient sport, Cedric. Julius Caesar was a famous cocker. A great deal of English law derives from this pet. American ethics, too. Washington, Jefferson, the early Virginians. They all played this game. Damn fascinating. It looks barbaric. Not at all, Cedric. This is a game about virtue, much maligned. It's about something that every man must face, how he takes defeat. I identify quite closely with it. There's a great political lesson here for you, Cedric. Do a man like you much good. Where the hell is he? Oh, he's on his way, sir. Betcha. This sport will teach you more about politics, son, than the whole Harvard Law School and all of the protocols of the elders of Zion combined. Mr. Pitt, I suppose being a dwarf has its mysteries. It does, sir. It sure does. Well, so, my friend, has being a politician. I don't enjoy shaking down my old friend, Mr. Kink, in order that I can serve the people well over the years. The mystery of politics is that it's a tragic calling. Pour another one there, Cedric. Give me another shot of this stuff. Boy, if he is not down here in three minutes, I'm going to stretch you out to normal. Bye. God, there's piss in the chicken soup tonight, Senator. <laughs> Never matter mine. Good to see you, Senator. I'll be damned if it ain't. Sorry I'm not making house calls much anymore, Kink. Let's get right to the point, Senator. Let's. I've been seeing this bag man, boy of yours, for two years now. Coming around, saying fancy things to my daughter, Reba. Chicken pays me. Yet, Senator, 
He never says anything. Never mentions the things that my people want to know about, little things like the United States of America and the Internal Revenue Service. It's things like that is why I insisted you come. Kink, I never touched your daughter. You never... Shut up, Cedric. Kink, times have changed. Well, I have my constituency too, Senator. My cockers are telling me that the IRS is setting out to bust them wide open. I ask your pasty-faced friend. He knows nothing of it. Think what you're doing here is illegal. Local, state, federal. It's all the same. I don't care if the Senator here thinks it's the second coming of Christ. It's against the law. Understand? To me, Kink, you might just as well be a whorehouse. You're allowed to do what you do here because I allow it. Now, not the IRS, not the senator, and not his bag man. Me. Understand that. I want a guarantee. You got one. Not a police organization, local, county, state, or federal, going to be in this barn tonight. Now, you see what I mean, Senator? This is as far as I ever can negotiate. Nothing personal, Kink. Just business. Now, so we understand. You bought and paid for nothing tonight. I don't even know you exist tonight. Next week. Well, that's another day. Yeah, just waiting for you. I don't know what's so damn funny about going to the toughest scurvy in the nation. Why, if you're laughing, you could sure come up with a box full of wet feathers. Could burn any. He is. Why, well, say, the way I see you walking strut this bird, it's a wonder he ain't half dead before he starts. You're supposed to condition him, not love him. Yeah, I know, but I ain't afraid. You ain't, huh? Nope. Well, you damn well better get that way. Good rooster, Wyatt. See it in his back and in his head? Ain't nothing as pretty as the eyes of a good bird. It shows past and shows future. Wayne. He's well bred, huh? Means he comes with a sense of honor. You show his breeding because he's got it. If they don't come with it, there ain't God and a thousand trumpets will bring it. Wait. He's five four. Give him a little leg, White. No water. And Koopy. Got it. Billy, come away that bird. He's one son of a gun, Billy. Damn red eyes are like fire. See that? Like fire. He weighed 512 time we get there. He weighed 58 last time and reached good and cut good. He'll be just fine. What about the boy? Wyatt, come with that pea head. Morning, Ma. You don't think she came here to wish you happy birthday, do you, Wyatt? Gailey, why don't you have some pride and turn around and walk back up and take yourself a hot bath? Wyatt's going to kinks with me, and that's enough said. Give the boy a decent break. God damn a woman be fair. Wyatt? You know, the only reason that Billy here doesn't talk is because he'd rather not. You see, he and your father are one of a kind. They'd both rather not. They let these dumb birds do it for them. Say what you came to say, Gailey. Wyatt, I made your father promise me that he wouldn't teach you these things. No. I didn't want you to turn out to be an animal instead of a man. Stop bullshitting, Gailey. Wyatt, if I asked you not to go, I wouldn't go. Well, hell, he's a good boy. He's got respect. But one day you would go, wouldn't you? Yes, ma'am, I will. One day. I've waited. All right. 
All right, all right. I won't fight you on it anymore. But now there is something I want. Just one thing. If I can, David. This is all the money we have in the world. Twelve hundred dollars. And I want you to take it tonight and bet every bit of it on Wyatt. Oh. That's not fair to the boy, and you know it. You have never won a damn lasting thing in your life, Stoke Yoder, except maybe me. Well, now it's your son's turn. And you take him and you bring him back a winner? Or don't bring him back at all. I am sick to death of losers. <laughs> Billy, get up them birds. Let's get out of here. Morning, Gailey. Morning, my lad. Gentlemen. Come to get some information from old Stoke Boy. Well, he's uh, in the barn. They going on to Kinks, ain't they, Gailey? Yes, they are. Are you really going to let that boy handle? Well, Stoke has a mind of his own. So is Wyatt. Yeah, but this is a big derby. Your boy ain't been tried. He could lose. Don't be stupid, Willard. Stoke wouldn't take Wyatt if he thought he couldn't handle his end. Stoke Yoder is not dumb. Well, a man doesn't get a brand new car like this every year by being dumb either. <laughs> Just what is it you want from us, Willard? Would you bet on the boy? I just did. Yeah, well, what did you bet? The bottles under your kitchen sink? No. Twelve hundred hard to come by American dollars. <whistles> kitchen sink itself. Gentlemen, I'm telling you. If any one of you bets a single penny against my boy, you're gonna lose. No Kyoto! Your old lady just made me damn mad. Well, me too, Willard. Come on in, we'll talk about it. What's all that? I don't know. Gilly must have laid an egg on old Willard's forehead. Hide these damn birds. Billy, get the worst birds we got. Hell, yeah, get a dead one, even. Got no dead ones. Guess it's too late to kill one, ain't it? Stoke, never seen you play crafty old boy before. Ooh, you certainly are right, Willard. Lordy. We're not fixing football games. We're fighting chickens here. There's a certain fraternal responsibility, don't you know? You drumming me out of the beam lair or what? You and that dummy trying to sneak that boy past us. Now, come on. Gailey told us all about it. She told you, did she? She damn sure. Probably better than the dummy. Greed? Oh, we're not greedy, Stoke. We're percentage players, and for that we need proper information. Greed. Simple admission to men in your own circle would be enough. Your wife admitted she hocked the house to put on the kid. What are you lying about? Stoke? All we want is a verification. Come on, we'll help you, boy. There'll be fifty thousand dollars in that barn tonight. I aim to win five birds. That includes Wyatt. Now I can't go on no even odds and come out with what I want. You won't have to. We'll certify you. We'll get those odds up to whatever you want. We'll keep it quiet and we'll put the kid down. Hell, everybody wins. Don't you see? It'll cost you nothing. Seems Billy has an opinion. Well, don't read it. Stoke, I'll personally guarantee you will go among all the cockers in that barn tonight. When Wyatt comes to the line, he'll be an underdog. You got it, deep. We'll see you tonight. Gentlemen. What is all that? Shut up, Wyatt. You just joined the establishment, Wyatt. You may get rich. There's no writing on this paper. I don't mean it's worthless. They're businessmen, Wyatt. One owns a bank, insurance, a hardware store. Now, any bad. To do what they do, you gotta be tricky as hell. Getting a leg up on the other guys, what they do for a living. I don't understand. Did someone tell them that I've been practicing? I ain't... Nope. They figured that out all by themselves. You see, men like that think that there's no tricks involved. It just ain't worth nothing. They end up being the most trickable damn people around. They just wouldn't believe the truth if you told it. You conned them? I did. Why? 
You heard what Gailey said. We have to win. What's that for, Stoke? You can bet I ain't gonna win six, seven thousand dollars for that woman and lose it to some Missouri redneck in a stick-up. Let's go. Let's go to Kinks and fight ourselves some chickens. We have been here many times. We only keep the ones who win. We know that we must win tonight. Never fight again. The rules were set for us at home. Wouldn't have a second chance. Our blood is on the line tonight. A chance to have a better life. We've come from far away. Bring with us the death on wings. There's no disgrace inside. We only bring the brave to fight. Well, just look at you, I, I damn near lost my old tongue on the steps of the First Baptist Church trying to lick the ice off an iron pole. That's childhood for you. Never knew you had that. You didn't even know your old man had scars, do you, boy? No. Stop this truck, Billy. What's going on? I mean it. Pull her off. I mean to show my boy right here and now. Stop it. Damn it, Billy. Come on, Paul. I'm going to show you right here. All right. Piece some help, White. What? Pull them down and see for yourself. Oh. Jeez, man, you're all screwed up back there. Ain't that a beaut? Yeah, yeah, it sure is. <laughs> Never saw anything like that before, did you, White? No, sir, I haven't. Oh, <laughs> 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 you, you didn't know I could do that either, did you, Wyatt? We take it to the six-inch line. Our birds are strong, our birds are quick. They're gonna keep the spurs up high. And win and win again tonight. Like that, Stoke. Well, her name was Alice Cooper Smith. And she had these great big. Yeah, 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 I know. Uh, you got it. She also had these seven brothers. They did it to you? Well, I did it. My weakness for knockers what did it. The brothers just assisted, so to speak. They're crazy. Stupid, son. Your old man is just stupid. But anyway, hear this out. I got her in her kitchen. Her folks gone to town, brother somewhere. And she's big on kissing. And there ain't no doubt about that. Well, weakness is everywhere, Wyatt. And them melons were mine. She went to fight me over them. Before you know it, we'd made a mess out of half that kitchen. Well, her shirt was torn, and there was no doubt about what my intentions were. When they... Who were the brothers they walked in? Only four. The biggest four. Oh, my God. <laughs> they set me down on a pot-bellied stove. Stoked it till it was pure red. Three minutes, well, two maybe. Threw me out into a snowbank, pure on fire. Oh, no. Is that why they call you Stoke instead of Raymond? Well, I thanked him for that. I hated Raymond anyway. Guess that taught you a lesson, huh? No, son, it didn't. I'm sorry to say. We are come from far away. Bring with us the death on wing. There is no disgrace in sight. We only bring the brave to
Gilly? Gilly, answer the door. Gilly, it's me, Clore. I know you're in there. I'll be a dirty dog. Clure, you are something else. You really are. Hi, lady. Oh, you know that puddle hopper of mine out there will turn around and go right back where it came from. You just say the word. Still like apricot brandy? Sure do. You wait here, I'll get us some. Kayla, I guess, I guess it might seem I'm a little crazy. When I heard you weren't going out to Kinks, well, I figured that, well, who knows? Why not? <laughs> We're not getting any younger. None of us are doing that. I am. I'm Cinderella. And Cinderella never grows old. Seems you always leave me with a handful of ice. How are you, Clue? Fine. Fine. Little meaner. A little richer, a little lonelier. There's going to be a lot of boys here tonight, I bet. Let you sneak off, huh? Most likely. All those boys I seen from the barrel, all those things I seen you do, I never said a word, Reva. You know that. You like watching me with those boys, don't you, chicken? You like me watching? If I find a boy I really like. Suppose, suppose it was me you really liked. Suppose that. I really do like you, chicken. I'm tired of sucking ice and being a fool. Viva, I spent my whole life looking up and being laughed at. I'd like to have something of my own someday. Don't, chicken. You'll spoil everything. be Barney from the chicken place. You go on down and tell him I'll be there. And chicken, don't you ever touch me again. You understand? I understand. Late. Is she mad? No more than usual, Barney. God, I'd hate to have her mad at me, today especially. Why is that, Barney? I bought her a present, a locket, engraved and all. Why? Well, why not? I like her. <laughs> you don't figure you can buy your way into Reva's pants with no locket, do you, Barney? It ain't that chicken. I think she likes me, too. <laughs> Reva, sure got a mess of chicken. I was thinking with all the chicken that die out here every week, you and me could go into business, get married. That's right, 24. There's a couple more in the cab. For the stealing? Just call it courtesy. Why? So you can get me on my hands and knees in the privy. My God, Reva, <laughs> get your mouth. I, I, I bought you a locket, a gold damn locket from Dempsey's. Oh, where is it? It's being engraved. I get it today. I could bring it out tonight. What's it say? I'll show you tonight. <laughs> I don't want a locket. I got a locket. I want a watch. Wrist. Reva, when you get it engraved, you can't take the damn thing back. Well. I didn't know you had a locket. 
I can't stop it now. It's in the damn works. Well, I'll give it to another gal then. How the hell many Reva kinks do you, for Christ's sakes, think they got? One, Barney. Just one. That's your problem. <laughs> I like the way you do that, Stoke. Practice 20 times a day, three years and two months, every day. In jail? Oh, wasn't so bad. Jerks kept stealing my shoes. Learned to read. Pretty funny story how it happened. Did you ever hear it? I guess not. It's about tits. So you're hung up on chicks, not chickens. Not what you think. Make a long story short, you were about two or three years old. I went to Kansas City looking for this job. I didn't get the job because the guy that sent me was a liar. But anyway. You ran into Alice Cooper Smith. I went into this restaurant at a big window on the street in Kansas City T-Bones. I only had $20 and my bus ticket home, of course. I shouldn't have, but I did. I ordered a T-bone and a beer. And just as I was getting it, there appears at the window of this Kansas City hash house, the damnedest looking woman you ever did see. Billy, Billy, he's doing it again. You're sick. Worse, Wyatt. She came in, just like I was her boyfriend, and started doing this. See that? Unbuttoning your clothes. You put me on. Yes, you did. Five buttons right straight down. Place full of people. And you went to wrestling on the floor? <sighs> anyway, it's worse. She sat down, ordered a T-bone rare, three martinis and apple pie. When she got done, she got up, kissed me on the forehead, and turned around and walked out. Walked out. Walked out. The bill was $26. I had to give him the 20 and the bus ticket to get out of there. That's what started the whole thing, Wyatt. I should have walked home, hopped a freighter, any damn thing. I called Claire Strickle, sold him an old Edsel transmission I had for $50. He gave the money to Gailey, and she sent it to me. told Gailey about the other woman. That was stupid. That was really very stupid. That wasn't another woman, Wyatt. That was a whore took a roof. Huh. Flat truth. What did Gailey do? She went on a picnic with Clure. Got drunk on brandy. I got mad. Clure had money. Always had money. I tried to rob the dime store that night and got caught and sent up. What, what are you talking about? You said that, uh, that Gailey was unfaithful? She was un unfaithful? One thing I left out. Why do you think I sat there and let that woman order all that stuff? Why? You loved her? Didn't even know her. Hell no, son, not at all. Just before she ordered, she reached over and asked me if I'd like to see her nipples. Said they were four inches, straight across. Oh, you said yes? I said yes. Wouldn't you? I don't know, Stoke. Get to be 18. Get to hear about your old man. Get to fight chickens. All right. She was unfaithful. Yeah. <laughs> I crawled up to the back window, turned that pole cat loose. Well, she wouldn't believe we had tea sippers from here to the four winds. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Claire, you embarrass me. <laughs> oh, but you know how to treat a lady, don't you? Just like a whore. But an honest, loving, true. That's the only kind. 
Well, that's the kind I am. Honest, loving, true. Can't help it if I'm a good whore. That's the way it is. It doesn't matter. Stoke's just no good. Your boy ends up just like him. You never get off the dime. You never realize yourself. I realize myself very well. Haley, I've always loved you. I honestly have. I told you from the beginning I wanted the boy, and I still do. I always wanted a boy for myself. I guess it's a little late now, but there's still the future. And you and the boy would fit into that. I guarantee it. You've never even known me. Gailey, what are you talking you about? I mean, now, hush, 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 I mean it. You have never known me. All of my life, you and people, everybody except Stoke, have taken me for granted. But never Stoke, never. Oh, but you don't know what I'm talking about. You can't possibly know what I'm saying. Stoke hasn't spent 15 minutes out of his life. Oh, if you are the boy, hold on, just about hold it. on. There is something you don't know. There's something a lot of people don't know. You remember our last picnic? How could I forget? Nothing happened, did it? Just like this one. We named Kiss. Well, he thinks we did. Kiss? Now who's being naive? Thinks we did the whole number. Fifty times, a hundred, oh, maybe more after all these years. Who told him that? I did. Are you crazy? Told him all about it. Oh, he thinks you're the greatest lover I ever had. He thinks I could just pick up, walk out on him, take Wyatt with me, and you, you'd buy us the world. You see, he went to jail trying to get enough money to buy me back from you. He's never forgotten that. How can he? You won't let him. That's right, I won't let him. <sighs> so that's that picture. So you see, until Stoke is dead and buried, there is no point in talking to this honest whore. Understand? Understand this, Gailey. Your honesty might just get one of us hurt. enough chickens in that parking lot to make a church picnic. <laughs> Drink is bad for you, what? Have a beer. Uh, Anna. No. <laughs> Anna, this is my son, Wyatt. He's a cocker. Well, how to do, Wyatt? This whole fraternity's heard about Wyatt Yoder, Stokes' boy. And <laughs> now, by golly, you're here. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, ma'am. <laughs> Why, it's 18 today. Yep. Gonna fight his first cock tonight at Kinks. You look like a winner to me, Wyatt. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Being how it's his birthday, the house will be pleased to treat. That's nice, Anna. Mm -hmm. I'll tell him. Uh, you win that chicken for your father tonight, you here? Oh, yeah, I'll try, ma'am. Thanks. This place is bulging with cockers, Wyatt. Yeah. If they ain't cockers, they're betters. Look around. You'll see three-fourths of this room in Kinks tonight. Every damn one of them knows your name. Don't look now, but here comes your athletic supporters. Stoke, how are we gonna get the odds down on this boy if you're parading him in a whorehouse like he's a man? Kid, you're gonna wind up like your old man. Well, that'll be all right. Deal is a deal, Yoder. Get his pink butt out of here. Well, there's nothing in our deal that says a man can't have a little pleasure. You can always bet against me. Yoder, you, this kid, and your old lady are all show and no potatoes. Let's get a beer. There's just one thing to do now, Wyatt. Sorry. You gotta believe I didn't intend it. 
You could have had some tang before or not, but now we got no choice. Tang? See that red door back there? You get up, walk right past them. You go in that door. It's on the house. Well, what will happen to me? <laughs> Nothing will damn well happen to you, boy. For Yoder's quiet. There ain't no cider squeezing Presbyterians gonna think they bought our balls at some farm sale. Oh, oh, oh. Go slow. Go slow. And cramp back there like it's by the grass mark. Steady up. You walk slow and upright. Don't worry about how it really is. Worry about how it looks. That's all they care about. And no matter what happens, don't you show your face in this room for damn hours. And when you come back, no matter what, you smile like Ada Canary. Okay. Goddamn. You know that I have known your father for over 20 years. Why, Yoder, this is my special prize. She's like a daughter. Melody, this is why. Hi. Now, I told Melody, but it was your birthday, and you're to be our most special guest. You two run on along now. Go on. You can come back down whenever you're ready, wife. Happy birthday, son. I thought you'd give me away, why? I'm glad you didn't, though, because Anna thinks I'm 21. You know, you're the first one from home I've seen in here. Uh, you, you look different. But how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Come on, sit down. Oh, sure. What's a nice boy like you doing in a place like this? Uh, I don't know. Same as you, I guess. Uh, since it's your birthday, you might as well celebrate, right? You do smoke, don't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, well, tell me about things. What's been happening? Well, you know, there ain't too much. My old man, he fights chickens, you know. That's illegal, isn't it? Jesus, damn near everything around here is. I got to admit, though, smoking grass and making love sure makes a lot more sense than killing chickens, wouldn't you say? Well, um, I wouldn't know too much about none of this. Wyatt, there's nothing scientific to smoking dope or making sex. But there must be a lot to the chicken business. I don't know anything about that. Fight my first cock tonight, King's Barn. After you fight your first one, it gets easier all the time. It ain't the same. You know what they say about weed, why? <laughs> It'll make a whore out of you, sure as hell. You know, <clears throat> I never knew you were gone till you went. Came by, couldn't find out nothing. Oh, wait a minute. If I don't like this incense, they'll bounce me out of here. That Anna's about as hip as a fairy stepmother. I got kicked out of school for smoking grass. <sighs> I got pregnant. My mom married this real bastard. He wouldn't even pay for my abortion. I had to go to this clinic in Kansas City. Ain't that a drag? I had to borrow money from my mother to get rid of a kid by her husband. You ready for this? They told me to get the hell out of their house because I was a bad influence on them. But I'm leaving. I ain't no good at this either. Why? Uh, it stunts my romantic impulses. You said you pull the trigger with my nope. picture of my... If your kids don't win tonight, you won't be able to buy a piece of apple pie in this whole state without cash money. Nothing doing that to me, Willard. I've been cash and curious so long, I think that's the way to do things. You're making fools of us, Yoder. I mean, how can we say he's a green, dumb kid with you making him out a whoremonger? Like you. Willard. I don't care if you drive them odds up 
down, or sideways. My boy's a winner. We don't need you fixing our B, Willard. You know, anybody who stays upstairs that long has got to be performing unusual and abnormal acts. Oh, I the time you know, you can't always listen to your folks, why? I mean, look what happened to me. You look pretty good to me. I'd like it if you kiss me sometime. I, I never get kissed anymore. And I don't want to go to bed with you either. Not here. Not now. If you want me to, I'll ask Anna. Oh, no, it's OK. Uh, well, it's hard to explain. Yeah, me too. But I got a plan. <laughs> I told you I'm no good in bed, so I got to have a plan. Oh, yeah, what is it? Oh, I'm going to go to Mexico and write, walk around. Why don't you go? Well, I need $5,000. I got half, but it's not enough. Oh, so you'll stay here till you get it. Well, I don't feel anything here. It doesn't hurt. It would be. Me too. I got it. Maybe I could win $2,500. Then you could go. It'd be the same as getting it here. No, no, no. Be a lot faster. Chicken fight's over in 15 minutes. <laughs> doesn't make it right. Listen, I'm going to go to King's Barn tonight, and I'm going to win with my chicken because I want to. Now, if you want to go to Mexico, you should put some clothes on and go before it's too late. You know, if you're not a whore, you shouldn't be one. And you really know how to hurt a guy. Hello, Melody, dear. We're almost finished. What? Your father's downstairs about to break furniture over everybody's heads. Now, I don't care if you're the greatest stud since Tom Mix. You get your butt on down there and get him out of here, you hear? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yo, do you take one more step, I'll separate your head from your body. That's the will don't fool with Stoke when he's drinking. What's going on, Stoke? What's the matter, Wyatt? You were out the whole second floor. <laughs> Kid, you were up there an hour and a half. Willard here says any man who stays a woman that long is practicing unnatural acts. What's natural? You'll never know, ding a -ling. Hold on, Wyatt. Don't fight no idiot like him. Come on, let's go. Good Lord, Claire, that's Gailey Yoder. She must have been raped. Has something happened to you, Gailey? Oh, Mrs. Trickle, I need a ride awful bad. More than anything I've ever needed in my whole life. As you know, Gailey, we're good Christian people. We'll be glad to take you anywhere the Lord sends us. It's 200 miles. Now, just a damn minute, ladies. Oh, Gladys, I lied to my husband. He's taken Wyatt to a cockfight. He's got a gun, and I'm, I'm afraid something terrible is going to happen. Gladys is right, Mrs. Yoder. We must all do God's work. You just get in the back with me, Gailey, and tell us all about it. A cockfight is a brutal expression of the devil in the man. By going there, we are doing right, Gailey. We must give thanks always for things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5.20. Verse 22 commands us, Gailey. It explains it all if we're just willing to listen. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he saved your own father.
left and you want to match them, we'll do it in the morning after the derby. Oh, uh, now, let's see. Uh, everybody's here that's coming, and if they ain't, they can come back next week and uh, fight as hacks. Uh, well, let's get on with the derby. When I call the match, you got three minutes to hit the pit. If you're not here, it's an automatic forfeit. These are Midwestern Derby rules. If you don't know them, you'll know them soon enough. The referee is right, even when he's wrong, <laughs> and goes stone blind. I might add, any ungentlemanly conduct that gets a barred faster than you can say tiddlywinks. All right, five birds. Most winners per man wins, and we split for ties. First pair, Harper and Simon. Hawk, seven five. How many? Ten times. You got it? You boys want me? No way. No way. All right. 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 I'm going to get it on that one. All right. Three. That's the best Stoke. You better be sound. I ain't afraid. I ain't. Damned if it ain't. What's troubling you, Claire? Well, there's word around about your boy. I thought you'd like to hear it. Howdy. Son, you've grown a few inches. What are the rednecks saying? Well, everybody reckons he's a little young for handling. Maybe I ought to go among them with a little cash. Don't mess with my boy, Claire. He'll cut you in half. Well, this is your big day, boy. Welcome to sport. Good luck in that pit. Shorter and Tinkerbell, you're up. Uh, we gotta go to work. Help, Billy, I'll do fine.
He's a goddamn natural, Billy. Oh, man, I never took a chance. We ate him up. We damn ate him up. The order of annotation. Heal up. We're up again, Billy. You got poor. Now, you be careful with Texans, huh? Listen, I'm gonna get myself a, a Pepsi. I'm mighty dry, okay? Now, you make it quick, quiet. We got four more birds to fight, and we don't dare leave them unguarded. Billy. Five grand on that boy. Oh. We're gonna sweep this place. We really are. I can feel it. I'm sorry I ain't a poet, damn it. If with love ain't enough, gosh almighty. Hi. Hi. You were super in there. You really were. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'd like a uh, Dr. Pepper, please. Oh, yeah. What you call that rooster? I heard you, but I couldn't make it out. Oh, uh, Francis. <laughs> yeah, I name all my roosters. What's your name? Reva. I'm I'm King's daughter. Well, I tell you what, I'll be back next week. I'll name one for you. <laughs> Ree. Yeah, Ree'll be a winner too. <laughs> Don't put it on the locket, fella. No kidding, Reva. You got a screw loose. What's my ice chicken? Well, I don't want no ice, Reva. Give me a Dr. Pepper. <laughs> you are in the Texan, you're up. They were carousing in the whorehouse all afternoon. Kids as bluesy as his old man. I see your point, Mr. Sawyer. Most certainly do. Oh, sure. Rule number 35 of the Midwestern speaks of the undesirable element. Hearts to the line. What I'm about to say is not so much in the form of a fraternal reprimand. It's more like uh, profiting from uh, another's carelessness. See what I mean? Yeah, censor never hurt like a financial loss. Good string going. Yeah. That was great, Billy. It's got to be, Billy. Damn, it's a Jesus speaking truth. Uh, <laughs> White goes through him like a house on fire. You whipped old Fleur like he was made out of blueberry jam. We're going to win this whole lap five. Look here. I'm afraid to kill it. Uh, listen, I want to get a breath of fresh air, okay? Hi. Right. I seen you walk by. I wanted you to. Yes, you did. <laughs> I 
We'll get a half hour break at 11.30. Pink's trailer's the one by the white shed. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I certainly did. If you got any robbers, you can bring them. Best gifts I ever had come from a fellow named Crawford down in San Angelo, Texas. I met him in uh, December 1921 at a meet at old Doc Thompson's down at Wichita Falls. Ooh, he was a craftsman, that Crawford. He made a pair of two and a half inch jaggers he guaranteed to cut a wall. Hand gourds, just as mean as a bad dog. Well, old man's dead now. Pneumonia. We've won three, Billy. At best, Ferd's our last one. We can't lose now. Oh, Wyatt, this is Mr. O'Malley. Mr. O'Malley is the best damn cocker we got. Honored us with a visit. Howdy. Mr. O'Malley, this is my son, Wyatt. Just won his first rooster ever a little while ago. Quiet Mr. O'Malley knows more about fighting roosters than any man alive. He can tell you a thing or two. You watch that last bird boy. We're on our way to the shindig. All right. He, he's telling you right, son. Well, I've seen them crooks sneak in and poison corn and half kill them before they got to the line. You come back and you find him full of water and you spend the rest of your life wondering why. No, sir. -y. Um, how would you like a ham sandwich, Mr. O'Malley? No, thank you, son. My old bowels are so bad that nothing gets through but a milk train. So was you one, did you? Yeah, yeah, you wanted to cut all right. <laughs> Man, there's only four things in the world to make them do that. Four things? Yep, that's uh, blood, food, music, and sex. You know that, and you know all there is to chickens. Why is that? Well, you give a chicken music for about a month, then take it away from him four days before the fight, and you made yourself a rascal. Now, don't ever take your hen away from your rooster, unless it's dark, or take him away first, because he can't see what you're doing. <laughs> He'll hate you plainly. You put that rooster with a different hen every day, and he'll be happy. Because one hen never made a rooster weak. No, sir. Uh, Mr. O'Malley, uh, would you mind watching my bird for a few minutes? I'm mighty dry. Uh, I think I'm going to need a soda. Mm, go ahead. Sitting's all I'm good for, so you just go on ahead, son. But don't never put him with 15 or 20. <laughs> that will weaken him. I hope you know what you're doing. So who does? All right, love is love. I can't talk on that subject, Lord knows. He's a good boy, Anna. We'll see. Say, you take the car on down to Kink's lot. I'll call in the morning, and one of the old boys will be happy to bring it back. OK. You can come back any time, Melody. You just take care now. It's kids like you that get hurt the most. and sat on it, and he watched me with them. It was a game. 
Without Barney him too? But today, I decided to change that. Why me? It's not about you, Wyatt. It's about me. No offense. Reva, I don't care. <laughs> Big one. Big one. One time. Five. 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 I reckon you're way ahead. Wouldn't you just be satisfied with the purse? <laughs> that ain't the way you made yours, Claire. You never quit when you was ahead. Want some of it? And I got it all down. We'll win 25 grand. I got every dime bet on that bird. It's the whole ball game. Play your cards. Charlie, bring some of that back next week. I'll get it back. <laughs> hey, Stoke, come on over here and let me see the color. Each one of them's a thousand dollars, will you? All right. Count it. Well, I trust you, Stoke. Better put that on the income tax. It might turn you in. Lost it, Claire. Lost it. Something wrong with your bird. No. Couldn't be. Why'd you say that? Just a hunch. The boys and I would like to look into it. Did you lose two? You weren't betting on me, were you, Claire? Do you mind? Mind? It's a pleasure to have you lose on me, Claire. Everybody else is. Look, Stoke. I'm... Forget it, Claire. Neither me, Billy, nor Wyatt left that bird. I just got beat. You know, Mrs. Strickle, I guess I always knew that I would never leave Stoke. He and Clure are such different men. It's Wyatt we have to think of now, Gailey. A foolish son's a grief to his father and bitterness to her that bore him. Touch of stuff myself. Niggers got it all anyway. 
here. Claire said someone must have got to the bird. Couldn't be good. What the hell am I gonna do now? It isn't greedy to win. If someone did get to that bird, it must have been Clur himself. Would that be right, Billy? You know he'd cheat on some things. But not on chicken. So it didn't happen. Nobody beat Stokio. Stokio. We believe you, Mr. Sawyer. He says you never left the barn, not even once. So it must have been somebody else. That doesn't really matter, Doc. Sorry, Mr. Sawyer. You know how it is. We thought somebody might have messed with Stokes' bird. I appreciate that. Uh, Everybody knows mistakes can happen. I'll just be going. It's a clean sport. There's no harm in trying to protect it. Now, myself, I, I won on the loss. No harm in that either. I did it. That was very nice, Wyatt. Go back now. Oh, yeah, me too. Chicken? Seen Wyatt Yoder? I seen him all right, but I can't remember where. Give me a few minutes and then come on in. I like you a lot, Wyatt. Wyatt, I talk to you? Yeah. Hi. Well, I reckon you'd call yourself a man. Well, no, we didn't do nothing. You call leaving your father's bird with that other man nothing? You poisoned it. Your father's lost everything. Son, if you think you're going to join this man's world, you're going to have to make a decision now. Lost everything. Wait a second. I left the bird with O'Malley. Willard put O'Malley up to it. They made a bundle. Now look, you go in there and talk to your father. You tell him exactly what you did and don't you water it down. Wyatt, tell your father, I'm going to talk to Kink, and we're going to take care of Willard. I wish I could give my boy a head start. Just hand it to him like Willard and Dave. You know, they don't even call Clear Clear anymore. They call him the Texan, like he was Gary Cooper. I don't blame Gailey for doing what she did. But damn it, Billy, it's the feeling that losing has on a man. Well, hell, I can't go crawling back on my hands and knees to that woman. I've got to take my life into my own hands. If I don't, neither me nor Wyatt will have a place to hang our hat. It's that damn simple. So come on, Billy, I'm gonna need you on this. Come on, damn it, I know what I'm doing. Clure? Seen Stoke? I'm afraid your timing's not the best. Everybody, 
shut up. Just shut the hell up. I said quiet, damn it. Now stand still, damn you. If you don't know, Mr. Yoda's holding a 12 gauge. It is aimed to tear away a fair share of this barn and a heap of people. If you interfere with him, even if you could shoot him in the back, it'll still go off. So I strongly recommend that you follow my lead. Now, Stoke, I'm reaching down for the cash box. It's all right, Billy, pick it up. Everybody else too, Kink. Remembering Mr. Yoder's weapon, I want you to toss your money to Mr. Yoder and his friends so they can reach it without inconvenience. All of it, Willard. Damn you, cockers, do it! I paid heavy to be left alone tonight. So we have no recourse to the law, you know that. Take it all up, Billy. Put it in the cash box. Hi. Hi. I can't talk now. I gotta find my father. Stoke. Stoke. Oh, Jamie. It's all right, little girl. Just a little robbery on Easy Street. You close down that gun, Stoke, or I'll kill you, a dummy. I don't care who you shoot. Dummy goes first. Chicken, for God's sake. Oh, I got him, Mr. Kink. You ain't gonna kill his dummy, are you, Stoke? Don't drop that gun, Stoke. Chicken's out of his head. If you was gonna do it, you'd have done it by now. Stoke, put it down. Everybody lives, and you go home safe. Now, no harm will come to you, Stoke. Damn, you're losing hard! Think of your boy! Now or never, Stoke! Assemble our senses. Uh, nobody leave this barn without first talking to me. I mean this in the best interest now and in the future of eternity. Now listen to me. I can't take possession of his body. Do you understand? He's just got to disappear. The rest of you, uh, write down your losses on a slip with your name on it. Nobody touch a goddamn dime on this floor. Now listen, you cockers, guests and friends, you better hear me plain. We will seal our lips with the wax of the Almighty. Ma'am. May the wrath of God bring you straight to hell. If you ever speak of this evening, Take her to the Bryant's hotel. Stay in my room till I get there. Come on, what about what? I'll take care of him. I'll bring him back to you. I promise you. Come on, Kelly. This night did not exist. Kelly? Use Willis' car. Get rid of the bodies. Now. Chicken, step up. I want silence in this barn. Now shut up! No! Look up here to me, chicken. Hang your head to me, damn you. You have one chance on this, chicken. Just one, and I ain't going to say it twice. Get to the house. Get your duds. What are you going to do now, son? Take $500 of my money out of that pile, stuff it in your pockets, and skedaddle your butt out of my eyes. 
If I ever hear of you in another cockhouse in America, I'll have you castrated. Now get. You have no choice in this, chicken. If you want to remain alive. There are enough felonies in this barn to ruin us all, and you did most of them. Now get. Poor runt bastard. There's one other matter yet to be settled. There are matters of the spirit yet to be... You don't want your father's world. You need a good start in life. It is essential that everybody in this barn understand the human frailties that place us now and forevermore into the hands of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Who's the girl, White? Bow your heads and let us pray. I'm a whore. Who are you? But dear God in heaven, we come to you with the heaviest hearts we've ever known. Wyatt, you don't want to end up like your dad. All of us, in some measure, hurt. Come with me, son. I want to give you that start in life. We are. That's bullshit. Souls. No one knows that better than My you, oh Lord. Was a decent man. We are children, and we have strayed. Our prayers, O oh Lord, Let him go. are for the innocent, that they be not stained by the blood of dangerous forces who would rob us of our pride and take from us the bounty of hard work and clear-headed dedication. Your word, O oh Lord, has passed among us generation upon generation. We have risen from the garden ashamed and fearful of our sins. We beseech you, Father, let us take our destiny before madness destroys us all. Amen. Don't. Jesus Christ. Enough is enough, Mr. Kink. My father won $20,000 here tonight, and these dead men cheated him out of it. Now let me come and scoop it up. Son. Don't even bother, Mr. Kink. Think what you're doing, Wyatt. You don't need that money. I told you I'd take care of you. You can bring the girl along if you want. That's enough. Okay, I got it. I don't believe this. It didn't happen, Mr. Kink. You already said that. You know, it's too bad about what my father did. I can't change none of that. All I can do is live my own life. So when you hear my truck start, and you hear me drive away, you can all go back to doing whatever you wish. Take the bird to the center of the ring and you lay your money down. This just into our newsroom. Prominent local businessman Willard Sawyer was killed in a fiery one-car accident moments ago on the Turner Curve on K-126, about two miles north of the junction of Highway 7. Police report that two other persons were also killed in the crash, but their names are being withheld pending notification of next of kin. And we'll have complete details on the 1 o'clock news. And if you're driving around in your car right now, come on, lay back, lighten up. It is a beautiful world, okay? Now, back to more music on the super sound of the Midwest. You're still the proudest bird. We know that you can fly. You've got the finest birds, the best that money can buy. When you hold your head up high and tell the world you're you, you gotta be tough, gotta be proud just to live. You've got to wait. 